Hello Mac friends and welcome to Mac Chats number 17 and today I'm very excited to be bringing you an interview with Nate from WASD20, um, the YouTube channel and I have been a fan of his for a really long time. Um, I think his one of his videos was one of the first I ever watched um, when I was getting into cartography and he's got loads of great resources not just for cartography but also for world building and for D&D so I would highly recommend going and checking out his channel um, and his Instagram and so yeah without further ado let's get into the interview. Yeah Cool. Okay. Well, it's nice well, to meet you, Eve. I'm Nate. Yes, <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on to talk to me about all things cartography, world building, and D&D. &D. Um, yes. It's, it's really great that you could come on to talk to me. Um, I have to say, like, <laughs> up front, I have been a fan of your YouTube channel for quite some time. Um, it's a fantastic resource for, well, most people looking to get into all kinds of nerdy things. <laughs> um, well, thank but you. I think... Um, yours was one of the first videos that I ever watched um, when I started doing cartography and really helped me out. So thank you for putting that online for people like me to take inspiration yeah. from. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's that's great to hear. I'm glad you found it helpful and, um, you know, I, I enjoy making them. So <laughs> Yeah, well, this interview is kind of like so that I can dilute some of the information that you've got on your YouTube channel to kind of find out a bit more about you um, and just have like a general chit chat about the kind of things that you think about cartography etc cetera, etc. Cetera. I did yeah. have um, a bit of a hard time I was like because I run two different interview um, kind of series map chats which is for cartographers and then world building and chill which I've kind of just started because I'm talking to more people peripheral to the cartography community and I was like I don't want to just bundle them all into map chats um, together. And I was like, well, which one does Nate fit into? Because he's kind of in both fields. <laughs> um, yeah, so a little bit. We've gone yeah. with the map chats, but um, I still will I be I think that's a better you. fit. Yeah. So um, could you start off by kind of telling us how you actually got into mapping? Have you always kind of done cartography or doodling and everything since you were young? Um, and how would you say that your style has developed over, over the time? Yeah, so I've I might need you to remind me about parts of that question, but no I have definitely um, been always been a doodler. Like I just loved drawing ever since I was a kid. Um, <clears throat> I think some of the earliest things I drew, I, I used to love cars. I used to draw Corvettes in elementary school. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. What else? Yeah, robots, just anything really. But um, I went through phases, and then for a while, I definitely wanted to be a comic book artist from like you know sixth to eighth grade. I was really into comics and comic cards and, uh, you know, just drawing bulging muscles and <laughs> all that stuff and, um, <laughs> and, and dragons uh, and knights and all that stuff. Just loved a lot of that. Um, but I, I never really had a ton of formal art instruction. I think, you know, I, I appreciated my high school art teacher, but it was a tiny high school and there was yeah. only so much she could do. It was just like, um, the curriculum in general like doesn't compensate for any artistic abilities <laughs> right I think her budget was probably tiny and I think that she taught like preschool through high school sort of thing you know so yeah. I, I never really uh, I think had a, a ton of opportunity um, to to really get into it um, and <laughs> excuse me and I definitely um you know, stopped drawing for a while there, but I still, I still, you know, had sketchbooks and, and for my whole life, I've just enjoyed drawing. Um, and I think when I first got into D and D, um, I didn't really know much about, you know, that there were people who drew maps or anything like that until I found a YouTube channel called questing beast. And he was my first inspiration. And I decided, you know what, he's I had a YouTube channel and part of my YouTube channel was just documenting some of the nerdy things I was doing. You know, it wasn't like I was trying to teach people. It was just like, no, let's just document. So that was really my first map drawing video was just, I'm going to try what Questing Beast did and just kind of document me drawing a map of a world that I want to create. Yeah. And um, people really liked that. And so I just decided, let's keep this going. And, uh, and eventually got to the point where I had learned enough where I felt like, I think I can now kind of teach people here or people, people already think I'm teaching them, even though I don't really know what I'm doing. You have um, to become the master. 
Yeah. So my first series was just called Drawing a Fantasy Map. But then when I kind of went back and redid it, I now I called it How to Draw a Fantasy Map because I felt like I feel like I've learned enough where I can <laughs> I can be the teacher, an advisor, a guide on that journey for other people. So um, yeah, that was really great. And I, I still uh, still enjoy making those videos today. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, well, both of the series, I've watched both of them. Um, and obviously the remake version is a lot more comprehensive than your original one, but um, I'd say both of them were really, really helpful. Um, and how would you um, say that your style has like developed with the time? Um, and who slash what has kind of influenced that style? Yeah, I think my style has definitely been more refined and just kind of, um, you know, better. I've just, practice makes perfect. And well, not perfect, but anyway, <laughs> practice helps. Makes something say. prettier. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in, uh, I, I have a good friend and neighbor who is an art teacher. Um, and, um I remember the first time I talked to him about this notion that like, you know, people think it's some mystical thing that some people are born with this ability to draw. And yeah. he kind of, you know, burst that bubble for me and said, no, I can teach anyone to draw. Yeah. And I never really thought about that before. I always thought of myself who had some natural talent as someone who had some natural talent for it. Um, but I know now that like, yeah, there, there's certainly something to that. But no, anyone can learn and you can get better and practice just it, it gets yeah. you on that process and good instruction and finding good teachers can help in that process, getting feedback from others. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think I've definitely gotten better uh, and found a style that's mine, um, but definitely taken inspiration from some folks. I would say uh, big inspiration from, um, oh, let's see. Max's maps. Uh, Maxime Plas is one of my favorites. I might be saying his name wrong. Um, who else? Um, I really enjoy Two Minute Tabletop. I really enjoy Rune Hammer. Um, yeah. and, and so there are, I think, aspects of them just because I enjoy someone's process. Like, I don't think you could look at Two Minute Tabletop maps and see like anything like, oh, clearly he takes inspiration from that. But you can't help but take little bits and pieces of even just the, the 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 line weight and style and the yeah, way they no, shade or any absolutely. little thing yeah i think that's just how art works in general in any field mm -hmm. or sphere like you kind of end up taking tidbits from people that you really admire and you like their yeah. style and it kind of that's how a style grows and develops like a whole movement even yeah and you can see one map and that can like just oh yeah i want to try that and so i think if you do that enough you eventually find that like, oh, my mountains kind of have this style from this person, but the shading on the mountains kind of have this style and my forests, I've really taken inspiration from this, but then I twisted it in this way. And, you know, it, it just kind of becomes this uh, amalgamation of, of all of the, the things you enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would say that you, you obviously do quite a mixture of different styles of maps. You do the full world maps like regions, and then you've also done like more of the dungeon maps and um, like, mm -hmm battle maps, that kind of stuff. Um, and in the beginning, you were doing more traditional and now you've moved more to digital um, work, I would say. Um, yeah. How would how do you think that that transition from digital to uh, tra traditional to digital has changed your style? Um, do you feel differently about cartography now that you're doing more digital stuff? Yeah, I don't know that it's... Um change my style that much I guess it has emboldened me to experiment more I feel like yeah. um definitely and be, because of the ability to just erase or just to say you know what I have this map and all these trees suck delete <laughs> and I can just boom delete all the trees if I have them on a separate layer which I often do uh not always and and just so that just frees you up to be more playful I think in some ways uh, with various styles and you know there are certain things that um, digital can can enhance, but I often do stick pretty closely to the tried and true, you know, uh, paper and pen method. Even if I'm mapping digitally, I'm I'm not um, I'm not getting into a ton of like digital coloring and things like that. I'm mostly sticking to the same methods I use on paper and yeah. trying to mimic those. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think, um, obviously, in terms of commissions and that kind of thing? 
is there still space for traditional maps in that kind of market do you think with this huge boom in digital art in general um given that digital obviously gives you so much more I'd say creative freedom um and also the 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 plus when you mess up you can say oh double tap and goodbye to that <laughs> yeah. um i think there's definitely still a market for for hand drawn on paper um and, and traditional methods um you know there are some very skilled cartographers who work in those methods who do very well um you know, I, I think uh, in some ways I have a lot of respect for those people just because of the attention to detail and meticulous um, method that I think is often required for that. Um, I, when I was doing maps on paper, I often had just kind of disasters, disasters, I would call them, where it's just like, <laughs> oh, I just oh, I can't no. believe I did that. You know, I didn't, <laughs> yeah, I didn't leave any space for my, my text. And now I have to like, try to figure out how I'm going to do text over these mountains I already drew in ink and things like that. Um, or, you know, the case of one map commission where one of my children got a hold of the pen while I walked away. Oh no. <laughs> um, I made a forest that was a little bit differently shaped than I intended. <laughs> that was definitely magic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, there's definitely still space for it. Um, and, and there's, I think some, uh, a style that that's hard to replicate. There are things that are hard to replicate digitally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And I think also when you kind of move from a traditional to a digital, you have maybe more of an appreciation for the process that it takes to create a map because doing it traditionally forces you to do stuff in a certain order in a in a process um which even though it's not necessarily necessary when you're doing um digital you can still kind of apply those principles when you're doing work like that um yeah. so it's good to have a balance of the both of them <laughs> yeah i think so and i still do um traditional once in a while um i've actually got one here that i you know, did a little while ago because on my Discord server, oh, I should adjust my exposure. <laughs> on my Discord server, there was actually a um, a competition. That's cool. Where we did like you have to do a hand drawn map sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, we tried to switch things up, and uh, that was kind of a request. People had been saying, you know, hey, let's do one where it's it's on paper, paper and pen only. And it was a postcard map. It had to be a four by six inch at most. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that was a fun one. So I'll still do um, things like that once in a while. And uh, that yeah. one I actually used as a prop in my game. Um, so, yeah. No, I think it's good when you can, like, um, especially for people who are just getting into kind of drawing their own maps, whether they want to do it for cartography or whether they want to kind of use it more for D&D &D or world building authorship or whatever. Um, it's, it's nice that they can kind of start with that um, well, I've got a friend actually, he's called Where in the Realms on Instagram, and he did a hashtag called Cheap Maps, where he was like, you can literally get like the like dirtiest scrap of paper and draw a map with like this pencil or whatever that was like 10p. And you don't have to use the fancy pens and the cartridge paper and whatever. You just have to make a map and just put it up. Um, and I really liked that idea that obviously it's, it's accessible to anybody that wants to, to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw, you know, on my Discord server last week, someone posted a, a map that was drawn on like a log sheet for their, it was something they'd drawn at work <laughs> on their break. And I just loved seeing that, that like this incredible map exists. And there's these <laughs> bars from a spreadsheet with, you know, yeah. lines from the chart. And it was just like, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's like life finds a way. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Um, and what are your thoughts? I mean, I know that you've kind of talked about this in some of your videos, but what are your thoughts about kind of following um, to a T geographical principles um, of earth and stuff like that, the cartography rules, um, so to speak, um, rather than just going full fantasy? Um, is there a balance? Should you adhere to the rules? Is there such thing as just going magic, just blaming magic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's totally fine. I, I just... Um... I think it's totally fine to just let your imagination go wild and ignore real world geography if that's what you want to do. Um, what I like to do in some of my videos is provide some of that geographical information for those who want it. 
um, because some people really enjoy that and they enjoy they enjoy science is kind of what it comes down to um, and and you know I had someone recently comment on a video and say uh, you know what would um, it would be interesting to see a map uh, of a world where you know the sun was much closer than uh, than our sun is to our world or just things like that and trying to imagine what would that do and that's that's you know science right there and uh, and it, that's a part of cartography that some people enjoy and world building that some people enjoy but if you don't enjoy it and you don't care then feel free to ignore <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I agree. I think there's, it's, it's good for the people that want to use it. And I think it is good to have at least a kind of base knowledge of what those things are. Um, I think it was Josh Stolarts from Map Effects um, on Instagram. He's like, it's okay. If you know the rules, then you can break them. Um, <laughs> yep, which I, I think that's agree with wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah, I think that's generally where most people would fall. Um, there are people who just don't tell me I don't care. You know, and, and they have the right to think that and I don't blame them at all. But I think for most people, it's, it's good to have a general sense of some of the quote unquote rules. And then you can break them deciding that no, that's not the way things work here in my world. Or yes, there was this magical artifact that, you know, fell to the earth and it has affected this area in this way. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can be, it's it's nice to not put a limit on your creativity, especially for something if you're like doing it for D&D, for example. You, you don't want to limit yourself um, on encounters and that kind of stuff um, by just being like, no, this definitely has to be this way and there's mm -hmm. no other way. Or yeah. take, take the other path. <laughs> yes. And could you tell us kind of like a bit more about how I know you say you're not, you wouldn't really consider yourself a world building person, um, but does world building kind of, uh, how does it work in kind of a chicken and an egg situation? Does the world building come first or does the map come first? Yeah, for me, I think the, uh, the map generally comes first. Um, I might have some loose concept, uh, but the reality is I don't do a ton of world building. I want to be someone who world builds. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I, I am, I'm honestly not. Uh, I, I, I dabble. Um, I've, I've done some world building. I have notes, you know, a few pages of notes on several different worlds. Um, but I, I'm not a prolific world builder. Or it's not a part that I enjoy. And often when I'm doing map streams, I will actually like kind of feel that out to viewers and, and, and ask them, yeah, hey, what about this place? How did, how did this get this way? Um, you, you guys tell me and I make it uh, collaborative and I enjoy that. But um, yeah, I definitely uh, am someone who just tends to pick up a pencil and let the map build the world. Um, the, yeah, uh, I, I, again, aspire to be a world builder, but I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm, that's one of my strengths or passions. <laughs> well, no, I think that it's, it can be kind of like what you want it to be. Um, and if the cartography side of it is more your passion, as it is for me, um, I'm, I'd say I would, I do world build sometimes, but um it's sometimes I get more interested in kind of like the map itself and the, the map will always come first. Um, and you say you kind of like have this loose idea when you have like this seed of an idea, how do you go about, what's your process when creating a map? Um, the places that you look for inspiration, do you use any kind of like digital tools, that kind of stuff um, to kind of get inspired? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I will often look at Google Maps, to be honest with you, or Google Earth. I'll, I'll zoom in on little parts, you know, the, the coastline of Nova Scotia or, or the, um, you know, um, rivers in Europe or, you know, just little things that I'll, I'll kind of look for and, and, and get inspired by. Um, I'll often use uh, random generators out there. There's one on Donjon. There's one, uh, there's Asgar's um, map. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, map generator. Anyway. Um, there's, so there's tools out there and I've, I've definitely used those to just to get inspired for, um, you know, I, I know I want some islands here. Um, let me go get some ideas for what, a ch what chains of islands look like, yeah. whether it's the real world or whether it's what Asgard spits out, <laughs> um, and, <laughs> um, and take inspiration from that and just kind of mishmash things together until I have something I'm satisfied with. Other times I'll just go straight from my imagination, but that is challenging. You know, uh, I think that, um, some people have criticized, um, 
my my bean method <laughs> where I spread beans out on paper. No, right? the bean and, method is tried and tested. <laughs> it is. It's like the orange and, peel. That also is good. Yes, <laughs> I think so too. Um, and so finding inspiration in these places can just, just be enough of that spark for it to catch fire for you. And there's nothing more intimidating at times than a blank piece of paper. And so getting anything down can often be enough to see it through to completion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what kind of supplies do you generally use? Um, do you have like a designated mapping space? Um, do you have any recommendations, um, either traditional or the digital tools that you use? Yeah, so I mean, I, I have just, you know, drawing uh, pads of paper. Um, I, I also do use for, for traditional, I have some, you know, drawing pencils. I think Artisa sent me these and um, they're fine, but any, any pencils will do. Um, and then I, I do use Pigma Micron pens uh, for the most part for inking. I haven't really tried many other pens. I've kind of, that's something I've I think when you try Pigma, you never go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that might be true. I've tried um, a lot of different pens and they're just the blackest color. Yeah. Yeah, I tried, Arteza sent me some and they were all one size and they were not as black. And I was just like, nope, those are out. And they were funky shaped. Uh, I didn't like the grip. So um, yeah, I also have these um, brush pens, which are really nice. Um, gray, oh, gray, gray. Yeah, the gray ones. Yep. And, um, and then for digital, I have a Wacom Cintiq. Um, I'll just kind of show that here. Um, let me pull up a map too might as well pull up photoshop on a map but yeah this is a, a really nice um, thing that you know after i had done a several map commissions i kind of saved my money and had some patreon money and i didn't spend any money for a long time from from my patreon i think for like the first year i didn't i kept all that money in there so that when it came to it i could buy this Very uh, let me see if i can <laughs> actually yeah let me sorry this is going to be weird for a second as i try to okay. zoom in on my map i can't hold the well. camera and I feel dizzy. Um, so anyway, uh, this is a map I'm working on. Uh, exposure down oh. a little more. There we go. It's a little bit. Sorry, the camera's doing weird things, but you get the sense. Yeah, we can see uh, it. So yeah, Photoshop, and, um, and this one's going to be actually on a DM screen for uh, dog mite games. I'm working on that. Okay. Cool. Um, they're asking me to try that, and I said, sure, that sounds fun. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a big, wide uh, three-panel map. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I generally um, use Photoshop these days, uh, and as I said, sometimes I'll use some of those map generators, and I'll and I'll import, you know, inspirational photos or um, maps into Photoshop to kind of just have them handy and, and be looking at them there. Um, so that's how I generally work nowadays. I don't usually start on paper anymore, like that map right there. I started that on paper, drew the whole coastline and outline, and I still do that sometimes. And then I scan it into Photoshop when most of the line work is done for yeah. some, uh, you know, the aged parchment look and some other digital effects and things. Yeah, which scanner do you use? Um, so I just have a brother multifunction copier um, that's like, you know, really old, but it's got, I think, you know, 1200, is it DPI? Is that how they measure those? Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, super high def, but it's small. So I use a program called image composite editor. It's a free windows program and it allows you to, um, take various images and stitch them together. So if I have a really big map, it might be four parts on my scanner and it's kind of hurts me to see it like crunched down and like wrinkled and folded <laughs> on the, no, you know, as my scanner is like eh, on it, but it's like, all right, it's going to be all digital soon. It'll be okay. <laughs> um, and, um, and I just plop that in there and I can, uh, uh, then image composite editor just stitches it together like magic. I hit go and it's like, it does it. And then I import that into Photoshop. Oh, okay. That's, no, that's good to know. Like, um, cause that's something that I've kind of like, I'm trying to scan some of my own stuff in. I tend mm -hmm. to do bigger, um, pieces, um, and it is hard to like <laughs> try and scan it all, um, given the size of it. So that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. And this old copier I have this old printer, you know, it, it does scanning and copying and, and printing. 
but it, the printer doesn't work anymore. Like the ink is clogged and it's just like, whatever. So I just keep this big hunk of junk around to use like once every few months, just pull it out to scan a map and then put it back in my storage room. <laughs> At least it still has a use, like you're giving it life still. <laughs> exactly. It's just kind of a, it's, I wish I had a, a new one that worked <laughs> fully, but anyway, oh well. <laughs> Maybe in the future, you can yep. save pennies for a new one sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, I have done the like photo method before when I'm just in a quick hurry and I just need something like, um, yeah, like I think this one um, that I showed earlier that I drew on paper, I just like snapped a quick photo of it, threw it in Photoshop. It was just a quick prop for a game. And then I added an aged parchment look to it. And like, I think I added a couple other little things that I'd forgotten, so. Um, that works too, taking photos um, if you have a good camera and good lighting, I think it's more important than that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's really, that's good to know. Um, and do you have, um, well, do you have a favorite map that you have drawn and do you have a favorite map that somebody else has drawn? Hmm. Yeah, I do have a favorite map that I have drawn that's coming to mind right away. Um, it is the map of Iskloft and I can look it up here. Um, I think this is my favorite. I don't know. <laughs> I well, it's it's unique in that it's it's not got like the um, aged parchment look. It's more of the it's like a grayscale. Okay. Um, it's almost black. So let me just show that here. So this is the map of Iskloft, and um, yeah, I just like it again because it's it's kind of unique and uh, and I it was a very different style. The logo for the record is not mine. That is uh, one that. Um, Lloyd from Jarl DM, I think he goes by Scald Publishing now, did. So I, this is in the, it's a fifth edition source book and uh, and he's someone who I've known many years and uh, does great stuff. So that was a really fun one where I feel like um, it was the first one where I think I tried this coastline style of kind of the, yeah. those like broken wavy lines on the edge, uh, which I really liked the way it turned out. I did do this one on paper first and then um, scanned it to do the line work um yeah and then just the on it yeah thanks yeah and obviously i just you know took found some norse looking font um same with the runes on the edge that was a lot of fun uh the knots on the corners were a lot of work i'd never really done something like that before yeah, not um, so <laughs> yeah different you know unique compass rose that kind of looks like the uh the viking compass i can't remember what it's called but um Anyway, that was that was a really fun one. So yeah, yeah, no, I like it a lot. And then the other great. one that I would say is one of my favorites of one someone else has done. Um, let me see here if I can find it. Um, is the probably the Forbidden Lands map, um, the black and white version. Uh, I just I love black and white maps. Uh, I don't know what it is about them. This one's a little hard to see because it's got the hexes and everything, but um, yeah, let's see if this shows up. Yeah. Um, cool. I just love the the heavy shading and line style. So yeah, the Forbidden Lands map, I can't remember who it's by right now, but um, it's really great. There's a color version too, but I just love the black and white version. Um, yeah. This is one that I saw and just, I looked at it so much for so long. And uh, so yeah, that's from Free League. Uh, so those are a couple of my favorites. Yeah, no, I think they're both really, well, your one and the um, Forbidden Lands one are both really, really cool. Um, and do you um, ever kind of like do any illustrations that are like cartography related? Yeah, I mean, I ha I've done some stuff like that. Not, not a ton, but I'll show um, another example here. Um, I didn't do the like page border on this one, but um, you know, they wanted, uh, this is from Absolute Tabletop. Uh, this is from the book, uh, Shadows Over Drift Chapel or something like that. I think I'm getting that right. Anyway, um, it's an adventure kit. And so, yeah, these are a little like house and, and building illustrations for parts of the town. I drew the dice there and um, it was just kind of to illustrate this method of generating the adventure uh, by rolling dice. And um, yeah, it's kind of a cool method. I think I did a similar one here, but it was with a dungeon map. So I wouldn't say I've done much more than that um, in terms of other sorts of illustration, but um, that was a fun one. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's fun to like kind of do other little doodles here and there, but obviously if you're a cartographer, then most of your um, kind of like output will be, will be maps. <laughs> Yeah, and I have like a, a figure drawing book on the shelf back there. And that's something that I, if I had time, I would love to just get into character art. Yeah. Um, but I just, you know, 
it's time. a whole different beast of its own. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. But I love drawing. So, you know, I, I would love to, if, if I could go back and take art classes, like that would be a dream come true. Just, just some drawing classes. Um, it would be great. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and kind of, can we talk about your YouTube channel just a little bit? Um, and yep. social media in general. Um, how do you, um, well, firstly, do you find that your relationship with your maps, your art has changed since you're obviously so public um, with your um, with your art? And do you have any tips for people who are just starting out on social media, whether that be the kind of Instagram, Facebook, or uh, YouTube's kind of like a beast of its own. <laughs> yeah. um, any people who are looking to get started on that kind of thing for cartography or related artwork? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one of the keys is just to like try posting the places and see what gets the most response um, can be really helpful. And that's going to be different for different people, depending on what you're posting and, and the style even because there's just different audiences on those different platforms. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, you know, who knows? I, I'm not on TikTok, but there's probably cartographers out I'm there so doing that. TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like this dark, mysterious place full of I dancing know. people. <laughs> Full of dancing people and, and all the youths. I'm an old youths. geezer. Yeah, I know that there's dog videos on there that I would like to watch. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's true. To make that jump. <laughs> I, I've seen some Jack Black videos from TikTok that that have almost convinced me I need to head over there. <laughs> um, and certainly. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, um, yeah, try different mediums, uh, different platforms, and see where you have success, where you where you get likes, where you get comments, where you get engagement. Uh, and finding groups, I think, can be really helpful too. So the, the map making subreddit, um, fa Facebook groups, uh, Discord servers. I have my own Discord server, um, you know, and just just kind of sharing uh, your love of maps out there is kind of one of the big things. I think when people, you know, sense you're being too salesy, they get turned off too. So sometimes it's just posting like, hey, I made this thing and that's it, yeah. you know, and not like um, always trying to, you know, uh, get commissions right but just uh there's a place for that and there's um you know value in that and uh, and uh and having even like you know so and so commissions open sort of thing like there's value in that but if all your posts are all about like give me commissions and they seem like advertisements you're not going to have as much success on a lot of those groups um and, and you might get banned from some of those groups yeah don't um, spam people um, don't spam <laughs> yep exactly so um just, just kind of showing people what you can do and, and showing people that you love it and you're willing to try different things, I think is very important. I think that video is valuable too. I think that um, whether you're doing video on Instagram or, uh, or Twitter, I think that there's, that kind of can set you apart too. If people actually, it's engaging to, to watch someone, maybe time-lapse. I know that like Jog Brogson has done a lot of that. Yeah. And um, Roxy, I'm sure he'll be watching this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's great. And, and that's been, I think, really valuable for him is just those, those time-lapse, those time-lapse videos are mesmerizing and, yeah. and fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love time-lapse videos. I could just like go into a trance watching them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and in terms of social media, do you ever get like, um, well, firstly, if you ever have art block, um, how do you deal with that considering that you're obviously posting so publicly and having to do so regularly? And also perfectionism and imposter syndrome, which I think a lot of artists um, feel and deal with, um, not necessarily always, but um, definitely on a regular basis. How do you deal with that um, given um, your kind of spot on on YouTube. Yeah, I think you know I have I have the advantage of of having a, such a diverse like field of interest that if I if I am not feeling the maps like I don't do map videos. I don't, I don't think I've done a map video in like maybe three months. Um, and I I've been working on this one map forever, and um, and I just haven't really been inspired by anything that's like. I got to show people this new technique that I'm learning. Like, no, there's, if it, if it doesn't happen naturally for me, yeah. um, then I don't do it. And yeah, I, I guess I'm in a just certain position where, um, I am slowing down on map commissions. Definitely the last couple of years, I've been working on this one for six months. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. <laughs> and, and sometimes I'll just work on it, like on my patron map stream once a week and that's it. 
and that's pretty much all I've been doing. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I, I just, um, I think I got burned out. I was for a while trying to do one map commission a month, um, yeah. which for some people would be nothing, but for my style, like I'll spend 15, 20 hours on a map quite easily. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. I have a full-time job. Yeah, yeah exactly. Full, <laughs> full-time day job. And I have a YouTube channel that I try to keep up. So for me, like the map, app commissions are definitely something that's like this is on the side for now maybe it'll come back to to center stage at some point but um that's just where my passions have have led me the also the map commissions for me are something that it's a, it can be a very solitary experience uh, yes i can stream the work but i often don't and I, sometimes i get people who don't want me to because it's maybe it's a little more secretive uh company that's commissioning a map that they want to keep under wraps or something like that so <clears throat> I find it to be a very solitary process, whereas making videos each week is a very interactive process that I enjoy a lot more. Yeah. So when I get blocked, I don't do it. <laughs> but I will say in general, finding just a new style and just drawing something else, just kind of telling yourself, you know what, I'm going to draw. Maybe you don't draw dungeon maps from like try a dungeon map. And that can be a way that you can kind of, you know, rediscover something and, and, um, and just kind of refresh your palate, if you will, cleanse your palate. And um, so that I think can be really helpful. And then uh, I think, you know, just getting inspired by others work out there too, and just kind of going and exploring uh, what other people are doing um, on the cartographer's code. Oh, that's another place I didn't mention. That's a really good place to post. Uh, and, and there are people who go there to look for commissions too. Um, they have a very- I find the website community. a bit confusing. <laughs> yes, the website is- Threads are like what, a bit daunting. <laughs> Yeah, the website is is a little bit like maybe 2005, uh, <laughs> yeah. but um, but it's it's really cool community. Um, I haven't posted there in a long time, but when I was really trying to work it and get commissions and get recognized, I posted there a lot more. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, now I can't even remember the original question. What were we talking about? Oh, map mappers block. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, map block. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there was another part of that question too. Imposter syndrome and perfectionism. Yeah. And, you know, I think that um, just posting stuff, I don't know. I don't know what, what advice I have to, to um, for that. You know, I don't really get, I, I get flashes of imposter syndrome, you know, from time to time. Um, but I, it's not something I would say I generally struggle with at all. It's just like they're, they're momentary flashes. Um, yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> I'm pleased yeah. to hear that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, um, so I, I think just keep on doing, if, if you love it, just keep on doing it. If you stop loving it, maybe stop doing it. Yeah. But I think that's pretty solid advice. <laughs> um, and of the three kind of like, um, world maps, dungeon maps, or like city maps, like battle maps kind of thing, which are your, which are your favorite to draw? I really like like continent maps. I'll say that. Uh, the term world, I, f I find a little bit um, like uh, problematic because I, I tend to not draw like a full globe oh, sort of yeah. thing, okay. but well, I will slash continent. <laughs> yeah, I will say that like, um, like, like this right here, Aranoth, right? Like, like there's more to that. There are more continents, but to the people here, like this is, this is the world. Yeah. Right. So I think that that's how I often think of that term is, is kind of like, what's the, it's a region. Um, it's a continent maybe. And to those people there, because travel is quite limited, perhaps that's the world. <laughs> and uh, those are my favorite kinds where I can draw a big landmass or two or three, and then imply that, yes, there are things elsewhere here, but I don't need to draw it all. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and kind of looking forward, um, do you have any future projects? Obviously not any secret ones that you're involved in, but any future personal or kind of like for your YouTube channel projects that you'd like to do or any kind of dream, maybe like slightly more out there projects that you would like to be a part of, like have a map on a TV show or something like that? <laughs> oh man, you know, yeah, I think, I think getting uh, more published maps would be great. But the direction I'm headed, honestly, is a little bit more like singular style and um, and not trying to be everyone, everything to everyone sort of thing. 
And, um, you know, I look at someone like um, Jared Blando, who I love his maps, um, or- um, yeah. have you seen the interview I did with him? <laughs> no, I have not. I need to watch that. Oh, man. Yeah, it's my two map, two map chats ago. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can't believe I haven't shouted out his book yet, but I love his book on fantasy maps, too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but his, his work is so diverse. There is a certain element where I see one of his maps and I'm like, I think that might be a Blando. Sure enough, it is, right? <laughs> um, but, uh, or someone like, uh, oh, the guy from Fantastic Maps. I can't remember his name right now. I think it's Jonathan something. Um, you know, very diverse portfolio where they're just, these skilled artists couldn't do anything. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to maybe uh, confine myself a little bit more. And I think a good direction for me to head, and this is not like, oh, it would be my dream sort of thing. It's just like, no, the practicalities of my life. Yeah. I think I would love to be able to do more smaller map commissions that are just, it's a simple map where I, I don't have to spend six months on it. <laughs> I, can, I can do a two hour map commission. <laughs> and um, that's a direction I want to head. And I'm a little bit unsure of how to proceed with that. Um, but uh, that's, that's something that I've been thinking about. Yeah, no, I think that's that's interesting because a lot of people are kind of going the other way. They like to think, oh, I'm going to go undiverse out. Um, but I think that trying to kind of like specialize in one thing can be really valuable, especially if you've already been trying a lot of things. Um, it, it's I think sometimes people are like, oh, I'm a bit scared to kind of go down this route of just doing one thing. But actually, I think if you're really good at it and there's a niche for it, then absolutely like make make a big nest in that niche and like just settle down in there um because there's yeah. nothing to stop you trying out new things in the future right so right yeah no yeah yeah no i i think um you're right that most people tend to head the other way but uh yeah for me just because i i realized like i want to keep doing maps i want to be able to help people out when they come to me and say can you draw me a map um, and I want to keep that affordable. And right now I feel like, man, the, the costs are pretty high for, for people to hire me. Like, I don't think I'm on the cheap side by any means, um, partially because I just don't need to be. Um, but yeah, I think that I would like to make, uh, be able to do mass people, be able to do them at an affordable rate. And I think that putting things in a little bit more of a box would help me do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's most of the questions that I had for you. Um, do you have any for me kind of like before, um, before I end the before I end the call. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I guess one final thing I'll say is like, I'm, I'm a very unique case in terms of like people who do map commissions because like I am primarily a YouTuber and and that maybe, uh, you know, gives, makes, gives me a little less credibility in some ways uh, that in terms of like advice on getting commissions. Because for me, it was just like, I made videos and suddenly I started getting all these messages, you know, and it's just like, that's not gonna happen for most people. Um, but I, I think that, you know, there are lots of examples, people like Jog, you know, uh, people like you um, and others who have like, they've, they've built a following and, and um, done so without having like crazy YouTube video series that did really well, you know? Um, so it's, yeah, it's very doable to be successful. Yeah, no, I think getting started kind of like just posting regularly um, creating something like a Facebook or an Instagram account, it's a great place to start. Um, and I think, being involved in the community, um, at least for me, has been almost more important than actually like putting out maps. I mean, obviously the drawing part was what I was doing anyway, but meeting other people in the community has kind of inspired me. And the the, the, the cartography community is awesome. Everyone is so supportive and everyone's kind of like chatting to each other, um, both publicly and also like kind of having calls and stuff like that. And it's really, it's just really nice. Um, I haven't come across loads of places on the internet that's quite like it, um, which is refreshing. Um, so yeah, anybody who's thinking about doing cartography, do it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's a great time to get into it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming and speaking to me. Um, it's been really great talking to you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I hope that you have a good rest of the day. All right. Well, thank you, Eve. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Have a nice Bye. day. Bye.